So welcome again. And today, uh, the guests of the 2025 initiative is Martin Vuick and Nancy Seifer. And uh, I welcome you. And uh, hi, Martin. Hi, Nancy. Hello. Hi, Sasha. Sasha. Thank you very much for bringing together all of us to the focus of the theme of the living discipleship, the path of living discipleship. And with this, I just transfer the, uh, the microphone to you and I will give you uh, control over the screen. Okay. Are we all set, Martin? Yes? We are all set. One second. Let's be sure that we're all set. <laughs> yeah, we're all set. Okay. Well, thank you, Sacha, for inviting us to make this presentation on the Scorpio full moon. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Warm greetings to all who are here from all over the world. Martin and I would like to share with you our understanding of the critical role of Scorpio in producing what we're referring to as living disciples. <clears throat> as we know, everyone who embarks upon the path of discipleship will become well tested through the many trials of Scorpio. But ultimately, in one lifetime or another, spirit will triumph over matter and the soul will gain control of its personality. It's under the influence of Scorpio that the ordinary human being is transformed into a conscious soul. Through the fires of transformation, we become aware that there is a plan of spiritual evolution for each of us and for our world. And we begin to have glimmers of the part that we can play in this plan. For today, our little microcosmic plan is for Martin to make a presentation about the staged unfoldment of consciousness on the path of evolution as it leads through the sky, sign of Scorpio on the path of discipleship. I will then offer some thoughts about the path as it leads to group involvement, and I'll talk a little bit about the fruits of, of a group experiment in living discipleship. And then we'll have time for discussion, and we will close with a meditation. To begin, I'd like to read an excerpt from Call from the Mountain, a document which I'll talk more about later. This excerpt brings us to the stage of the path to which the purifying tests of Scorpio lead. From Scorpio onward, the path becomes increasingly vertical, the disciple encounters the livingness of the spiritual hierarchy and the reality that, in fact, the path is one that builds a relationship between a disciple and an ashram and ultimately leads the committed disciple into the hierarchy. <clears throat> Excuse me. This excerpt is from Message 26 of Call from the Mountain. For living beings in all kingdoms of nature, the object of life is gaining greater awareness. For the evolving human being whose soul ascends the spiral of consciousness, expanded awareness brings an expanded sense of identification with other lives and ultimately with life itself. For disciples, the verticality of the path of ascension signifies their role in the world. The further a disciple travels up the mountain toward the next kingdom, the greater the capacity to bridge the divide between ordinary humanity and the hierarchy by serving as a vessel for higher consciousness to flow into the world.
Martin will now describe the evolutionary process that leads to transformation through Scorpio, and then we'll talk more about that vertical path in a little while. Hello, everyone. Um, I have a welcome slide that shows a path. That's the spiritual path, if you didn't recognize it, the path of mm -hmm. living discipleship. And we're going to present an idea here looking kind of from the cosmic point of view, from the macrocosmic point of view, but the whole. And we'll look through the lens of the three crosses of the zodiac, not so much from uh, the individual horoscope or the even the group, but more the movement through time and space in the evolution of form, soul, and spirit. Those who have had a chart done or know anything about astrology know that the mutable cross is basically consists of pairs of opposites, Gemini and Sagittarius, Pisces and Virgo, the fixed cross, the middle cross, consists of Leo and its opposite, Aquarius, and of Taurus and Scorpio, its opposite, and the culminating cross, the cross of the Father, is the cardinal cross. Aries and Libra are opposites, and Cancer and Capricorn, and a whole presentation could be given on the crosses alone, but our focus today will be on moving from form through soul into spirit. And today we convene this webinar under the sign of Scorpio, the sign of the nine-headed Hydra. This picture to the left portrays the assumption of matter into heaven as the triumphant disciple Hercules lifts the nine-headed Hydra into the air. Hydra is the mythological serpent of desire which the disciple, every disciple, conquers only by humility, by falling on your knees. And from that position of humility, we lift up the serpent into the air, and then deliverance comes. You'll see from the image here that it's reminiscent of the lifting of the kundalini forces, the energies in the etheric body from the base to the crown, and that serpentine winding upward. It's, there's an inner action that corresponds to this evolution through time and space. The nine heads represent the tests of Scorpio, testing the readiness of the threefold personality, which is the form nature, the to be in conscious relation to the soul. The disciple on the path to spirit is being tested in his or her capacity to dwell in two worlds simultaneously, the kingdom of earth and the world of form, the kingdom of the soul, the realm of consciousness. Actually, today, as we move into the age of Aquarius, we're in transition, and humanity itself is being tested as the world disciple. With the wars of the last century, World War I, World War II, the wars that followed, and with the conflicts of today, with global economic and environmental crises, with the humanitarian refugees crises now occurring, with the collapse of governments, the clash of cultures, the growing tensions between East and West, humanity itself is being tested. Humanity stands at a choice point. As the Tibetan master puts it, will the world, Hercules, lift this problem up into heaven and elevate the hydra of passion and hate, of greed and aggression, and of selfishness and ambition up into the region of the soul? Or will it carry the whole matter down onto the physical plane with the inevitable corollary of world disaster, world war, and death. Such are the problems with which the guiding hierarchy is faced. We, humanity, are midway in our journey as one human family, a collective unit of consciousness on a shared journey. We, together, are the world Hercules, mounting the fixed cross of discipleship at the midway point emerging from
from form through consciousness towards release into higher life. Pictured here you see the three crosses as three squares, three colored squares. Through the lens of the, the zodiac we see here three unique steps marked in the heavens by the three crosses. The fixed cross or the middle cross is marked in blue. The mutable cross corresponds to the form nature in this grand vision of the cosmos, the body nature of the cosmos. The fixed cross corresponds to the sun or the consciousness aspect and the cardinal cross in this grand view represents the life or the spirit. Form, soul, spirit. The mutable cross, the fixed and the cardinal cross. And on that middle cross Scorpio, the sign we're in today, the sign of discipleship, is found and it marks in the great journey a middle point, a midpoint. The fixed cross is the middle cross. It's the middle point of the three. And on that middle cross there are three fixed signs which govern three initiations. Leo governs the birth of the Christ in the human heart, marked in red. Scorpio governs the second initiation, baptism, bathed in the waters that purify. And Aquarius, the air sign, fixed air, governs transfiguration, Christ on Mount Tabor, and the destiny of each one of us who makes the grade. And in this living process, Scorpio is the middle stage, the middle period of testing and trial and purification in the unfoldment of expanded consciousness that comes with initiation. The fixed cross also can be seen as having or being born of two motions, a horizontal motion and a vertical motion, as we'll see here. As the result of these two motions together, this dual motion, consciousness moves, unfolds through space and through time. And the image here for space is the toroidal field of energy which the new sciences are investigating. Men like Nazim Haraman and the, at the Resonance Project are looking at mathematically and through the eyes of the new physics the actual underlying energy pattern of form and our understanding how the divine idea comes into manifestation in space and in time. And time, as you see here, is cyclic or cyclic. In space, forms are built within a ring pass knot, a toroidal field of interpenetrating energies. The language of the Tibetan is wheels within wheels. Create multiple dimensions emanating from a central core, a vertical arm of the cross. In time, consciousness unfolds through form over lifetimes. Around and around it goes like Shiva, the cosmic dancer. Death, rebirth, birth, death, a continuing cycle through lifetimes, through multiple dimensions. Over time, energies come to balance at the midpoint in the heart of the disciple, in the heart of our own toroidal energy field. Two pairs of balancing opposites meet at the midpoint. Taurus interacts with Scorpio, Leo interacts with Aquarius, and at the midpoint these four energies meet, blend, and ultimately rise. For the disciple, no matter in what sign his or her son may temporarily find position, whether they be a Sagittarius or an Aries, Capricorn, no matter what the sun sign is, the experience of the disciple is that of the vertical life of spirit and the horizontal life of relationship. Verticality refers to spirit, the horizontal life to relationship. And the experience of any disciple will, be this, will reflect these two realities. The vertical life of the individual upon the fixed cross is ever Leo Aquarius. This indicates that the self-centered individual in Leo learns the lesson over lifetimes, 
the lesson of the fixed cross. It becomes group conscious, decentralized, given to service. At the same time, the disciple experiences the horizontal life upon the fixed cross. Taurus, the bull, and the scorpion of Scorpio. Taurus Scorpio indicates that desire for materiality, the bull, is finally being superseded by desire for something higher, desire for the spiritual values. A great process of transformation brings ultimate change. And the consciousness of the disciple through this process expands. Material desire moves toward and moves into spiritual values. Self-centeredness of Leo moves toward and moves into group consciousness. If you are a disciple, if you're at that stage of the path of return, you are experiencing this battle between material desire and spiritual values, this emergence from everything revolves around me to I'm a part of a group and I must adjust my values, my orientation, my attitude. Progress on this path is demonstrated through the test of Scorpio. They, one might ask, why are we tested? Why are there these trials? Because we must demonstrate simply that the influences of the other signs of the must be non-existent for us. That's the language that the, that the Tibetan uses. Ultimately, we triumph when those influence, influences such as the appetites, desire, the lower critical mind, in their three aspects, each one, have no existence for us. That brings triumph. As this slide, which I borrowed from a website, shows the tests of Scorpio, the multiple tests, the nine tests of Hercules on the fixed cross bring light, bring greater light. Karmic challenges met bring occult wisdom. Scorpio is tied to the phrase, the light of day. And of the 12 signs, when considering the light aspect of the signs in the, in the zodiac, Scorpio is the only one where all three signs, all three lights are found. This is the place where three lights meet, the light of form, that diffuse light of cancer, the light of soul, that self-awareness of Leo that moves into Aquarius, the light of life itself, which launches the prog process and which turns the disciple on the wheel when the time comes to reverse direction on the wheel. The light of form, the light of soul, and the light of life, all three lights meet, blend, and rise in Scorpio. Scorpio thus produces the light of day. The light of consciousness meets the dim light of form. The dim light of form is on the left, <laughs> the light of consciousness is on the right. And when form meets consciousness, a crisis arises. The crisis of the battlefield. The crisis of the battlefield involves a clash of lights. The lesser light of substance resists losing itself in the greater light the light of consciousness, the light of the soul. In terms of the three crosses, three lights begin to interact in Scorpio. It's the only one of the signs where all three lights are found. It's the place of discipleship testing. We are tested on all levels of our nature at this midpoint, this middle stage of the second cross. And this marks actu in actuality a beginning, as Nancy said, the beginning of a new verticality penetrating the veil and beginning to recognize, acknowledge, and live in the world of subtle energies and consciousness as well as the world of form. It, there then results a blending and a fusing of the lights over lifetimes. And form gives way to consciousness, the light of form gives way to the light of consciousness, gives way to the light of life, and the process of one fusing process takes place. Light fuses with light, fuses with the greater light. Form, consciousness, and life, a progression from substance to soul to the animating presence. And substance is a key word here, as we will shortly see. 
again to reemphasize, discipleship in Scorpio marks a beginning. We are at the midpoint between the first and the third cross. We are at the midpoint in the cycle of initiation on the fixed cross. And DK says that at the first, second, and third initiations governed by Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, Scorpio is in control of, manages, governs the tests and trials at all three stages. So if you're a disciple, you're being tested. It doesn't say that you're a second degree initiate because you're being tested. It says you are on the fixed cross at one of these stages of opening. The process is one of fusion and integration. This is the theme of all three crosses, the mutable, the fixed, and the cardinal. In the first case, it's the fusion of the personality into one functioning whole. In the second, it's the fusion of soul and personality consciously. And in the third, the fusion of the threefold expression of divinity itself. That's the monad. The middle is the ego. The first is the personality, the form, the intended instrument for soul expression in the world of form, producing ultimately an appearance of blended energies. Remember, the energies, the lights meet, and then they blend after there's a triumph in the contest between the lesser and the greater light. The keynote of their influence is the, is the power to include and the full expression simultaneously in time and space of the vertical and horizontal life. As was said earlier, the disciple is being tested in their capacity to live in two worlds simultaneously. The process is one of fusion and it takes place in stages, which are marked by the three crosses from this grand view of the cosmos. Working with form or substance, with soul or consciousness, with life or the animating principle. This can be simply understood or understood with simple analogies. For example, the first analogy is that of a baker kneading dough. The second analogy is that of a gardener planting seeds. And the third is the analogy of the New Age scientists, such as Nazim Harriman, I mentioned earlier, discovering zero-point energy. You'll see that he has not yet found it here. And we will save his discoveries, the discoveries of this new science and the new scientist for the last, drawing parallels, if we can, to finding the central life hidden within the form. For now, we will simply look at each of the analogies from form to consciousness to life. Analogy one kneading the dough. And the dough in this instance, the analogy is kneading the dough of cosmic substance. I borrow this analogy from a lovely woman who used to speak at the Edgar Casey Foundation where I worked for a few years. Her name was Eula Allen and I remember to this day listening to her tell us about the origin of the human family. God the Creator began his creation by kneading the dough and I add the words, the dough of cosmic substance. Her premise was that, as after reading the Casey readings, was that all individuals, all men and women, all personalities, come from the same substance. We are each a clump of dough plucked by the baker, the creator, from the original mass. Now, if you think of the three crosses, the first cross, the mutable cross is the cross of mass consciousness, diffuse awareness. The diffuse light of cancer moves upon the face of the waters to produce this animated substance. Cosmic substance equals the stuff that all forms are made from. In the ageless wisdom, the parallel here is the ether. The etheric body the vital body is the true form underlying the dense physical form. And this is one of the key messages of the K messages, which we will hear from shortly. It is a sphere of vital energy. And the physical form is embedded and undergirded by this living substance. In the words of the Tibetan, first in summary and then in 
specific language. In the first incarnation of the Logos, in the first solar system, it was the ether under the impact of universal mind that formed the substance of the outer world. The perfecting process, the kneading or preparation of the substance, the stuff, the animation of the atoms of matter began in that system on the mental plane as an expression of divine will. Mind and matter interacted in the precise language of the Tibetan, quote, this is the will which is inherent in substance and which actuates all atoms of which all forms are made. It is closely related to this first system. The energy of the ray that brings this about, ray five, is intelligence. It is the seed of consciousness, but not of consciousness as we understand it. It is the inherent life of matter itself and the will to work intelligently. It is that living something for which we have no name, which was the product of the first incarnation of the Logos. As I hinted earlier, this etheric substance impressed by mental energy is related to zero-point energy, the quantum field energy of the vacuum which New Age scientists are investigating. It is, it is, to quote from Education in the New Age, it is the vibrant substance of which the worlds are made, inherited from the previous solar system, governed in its evolution by the influence of that first cross, the mutable cross of form, the cross of substance. The lesson from all this, as Eula Allen herself might put it, prepare the dough before you bake the bread. Which brings us to analogy two, planting a seed of consciousness in the prepared substance. The dough of the cosmic baker will receive the seed for it's been prepared. Realize that the substance, the stuff of which we are all made, must be seeded with light if the plan of evolution is to succeed. In other words, God is both a baker and a gardener. Again, in the words of the, of the Tibetan, first, the material aspect needs to be prepared. Then, a germ of light must be sown, nurtured, and brought to fruition before the inner life can be revealed. To quote, at first the personality, and remember the personality is the form, the potential instrument for the consciousness aspect of the soul. At first the personality acts the part of mother or of material aspect to the germ of the inner life. Then the ego, the middle aspect, the discipleship aspect, the soul aspect, manifests its life within the personal life and produces a shining forth which groweth evermore and more until the perfect day. Now remember the idea that Scorpio is described as the light of day where the three lights meet. At that perfect day of revelation it is seen what man in essence is and the spirit within is revealed, which corresponds in more esoteric language to the final revelation of the jewel in the lotus. Now much could be said along these lines, but for now simply think in terms of seeds. And I give thanks to Michael Linfield who posted a wonderful article on seeds and light and human evolution on our website. But think in terms of seeds germs of consciousness, individual consciousness and group awareness, two types of evolution seeded when we were first created from that mass of substance by an intelligent, wise, loving creator. Germs of consciousness, individual and group awareness implanted in the prepared soil of divine substance. Consider also the lesson that might be learned about the nature of the second stage in cosmic evolution. As a student of both Edgar Cayce and Dwal Kool might put it, 
when you think in terms of consciousness within the form, <laughs> seated dough is the way to go. <laughs> and so, we draw to a close the introductory part of this talk on the path of discipleship. And to tell us about things like group discipleship, discipleship living, and the secrets of the life aspect hidden within the form, we present Nancy Seifer with what I would call lesson three, the electric light at the center of the true form is the light of life itself, but she would probably call it life from the center, the path of living discipleship in the Aquarian age. So I give you Nancy Seifer. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome, th Nancy. <laughs> you can call me by my first name. <laughs> You're welcome, Miss Seifer. <laughs> Well, as Martin has just impressed upon us in his inimitable way, we begin this journey of human evolution as a clump of living substance. We're similar to all other clumps in some ways, yet individual and separate. Our sense of self ends with the contours of our own skin. Everything changes when the germ of light that Martin was referring to, the germ of divine consciousness, begins to unfold. That germ of light has been lying dormant in the individual clump for eons, but at a certain point, something stirs within it and begins the process of unfoldment. As it starts to awaken, it becomes magnetically attractive to the lower self that is the form and the soul that germ of light begins to lift up the forces of the threefold lower nature and in time a turning on the wheel of life occurs our individual our sorry our orientation shifts from matter to spirit and the path of return to the source begins the tests and trials of Scorpio, as Martin said, are designed to show us where we are on the path between the two great lines of force and to lead us closer to identification with our true self, the soul. We arrive there in a given lifetime when the light of the soul is of such intensity that it breaks free of the old identity of the persona and seeks a higher way. But before that way can be firmly trod, one must pass through the crises of the battlefield, that is Scorpio, until at last the personality yields its fierce control over the lower nature and surrenders to the soul. As soul light filters into awareness during this process, the inner worlds of subtle reality are sensed the outer density of the physical world gives way to a perception of the golden web of life that connects us all. Barriers of personality fall away as the light of understanding grows along with the love that is the nature of the soul. Released from attachments to form life through the fires of Scorpio, the triumphant disciple emerges in freedom. The life of spirit calls ever more forcefully. The monad, the individual spark of divine spirit, gradually infuses the life of the liberated soul, directing it with increasing focus toward its part in the plan of evolution. The vertical path begins in earnest when the livingness of spirit animates the conscious form. Until this time, the path is primarily a horizontal experience, which Martin mentioned, uh, an experience primarily of relationships in the world. The light of the soul reveals the inner unity of all lives, 
on this plane and the love of the soul erodes the barriers to the experience of that unity. We come to know the unifying, synthesizing energies of Aquarius. The soul is group conscious by nature. It seeks to blend and fuse into the greater whole, and so we're led to coalesce our energies with souls of a similar resonance and life purpose. After Scorpio, the discipleship path leads upward along the path of initiation and into the spiritual hierarchy. This is where the path takes on the quality of greater livingness. One of the major means of ascent on this path is the transference of thought via the Antakarana from the teacher to the disciple. In the life of the disciple consecrated to serving the plan, thoughts become invocative of guidance and direction from the ashram of the master with which the soul is affiliated by Ray. This guidance can come in many forms. But the form, the particular form matters less than the electricity that it carries. The disciple is aware of being infused with spirit that propels the life forward on the path toward the fulfillment of a particular task related to the work of the ashram that will contribute in some small way to the divine plan for the spiritualization of our earth. I'd like to tell you briefly about a group experiment that was infused with this kind of electricity. About two and a half years ago, a group of disciples came together around a shared impulse. As students of the Master DK, we were aware that by that point, in the time of the, during this period known as the time of the forerunner to the externalization, there was supposed to have been closer cooperation between the human and spiritual kingdoms for the working out of the plan in, that, in this transition time. In an effort to understand why this hadn't happened, at least to the best of our knowledge, we decided to try to identify the obstacles that were preventing the flow of communication between disciples and the ashrams of the masters. The group, which Martin and I were both part of, became involved in an experiment to bridge the gap between the two kingdoms. And as it happened, through a, a very spontaneous process, which was in some ways parallel to what we know of as, as invocation and evocation, through this process, we attracted guidance in the form of two sets of writings and they are believed to have come from a member of the hierarchy. The first set of writings was a series of 60 messages transmitted one per day by a group member who served as the amanuensis. When published, it was titled, Call from the Mountain, Messages for Disciples from the Heart of Kanchenjunga. The excerpt that I read at the opening of the webinar came from this call, whose intent was to reach disciples throughout the world with the reality of the hierarchy's approach to humanity, and also to elicit the help of disciples in creating an environment conducive to this closer approach and to the externalization and to the reappearance of the Christ. The second set of writings was given specifically for the benefit of this group of disciples, but was later edited and published as under the title of Group Instructions. It concerns the growth and refinement needed to establish a discipleship group that can become a living outpost for the inner ashram. Unexpectedly for many of us, both sets of writings focused heavily on love 
on universal spiritual love. The favorite quote of our group from the messages was shown in the first slide. Beauty is the magnet of the new world and love is its portal of entry. As the messages continued, we came to realize how essential is the force of love to the unfolding of the new age and its new civilization. It's the love of the soul that will provide the unity of spirit crucial to the new era. And by the way, whose first shoots we're already beginning to witness in our world. I'm sure all of you have noticed the many signs and emanations and embodiments of love that we're seeing, especially in recent months in our world. But in addition, as we learned in these writings, love is essential in forging links between the human and spiritual kingdoms. We know, of course, that the hierarchy is the heart center of the planet. But we're learning increasingly that the path that leads into the hierarchy is forged through love as much as through light. Let me close this part of our program by reading a few excerpts from Call from the Mountain. After each one, I'll leave a moment of silence so we can absorb the thoughts. And by the way, if anyone is interested in the documents, either the call, call from the mountain or the group instructions, they can be found at www.callfromthemountain.net. <clears throat> the first two excerpts that I'll read are from Message 29. The heart is the pathway into the spiritual kingdom. It is the sole guarantor of harmlessness, whose positive expression is a love for all beings. Harmlessness means different things at different levels of awareness. It is one thing to avoid harming other creatures for fear of karmic consequences, it is another thing, <coughs> excuse me, it is another thing to realize that all lives are intertwined in a single web of life and when we harm another we harm ourselves. And it is still another thing to feel divine love saturating the filaments of the heart to the degree that harming any life is an impossibility. The great work of planetary redemption takes place under the downpouring love of the Christ of the Christ and his ashram. The free flow of the soul's love is essential for discipleship groups to achieve their goals. The emphasis of the past on accumulating knowledge eclipsed the faculties of the heart, whose petals can open in a group only when tenderness is prized as much as a well-stocked mind. The advance guard of the human race is only now becoming ready to hear such words. Those who can hear them and live by them will be the architects of the new Jerusalem. In the future, the work of soul groups drawn together around a shared purpose will be sustained by the power of love. From message 28, 
When one individual in a group takes a further initiation or advances to a new stage on the path, the entire group is the beneficiary. This truth has particular application to the force of group love. Once a group has experienced the radiatory glow of love, magnetic links between its members strengthen and each gains greater illumination. With the realization that every advance on the path creates a greater opening to the inflow of love from the kingdom of souls, harmful qualities such as envy, competition, and criticism fade into shadows of their former potencies. There is a point in spiritual development where the salience of the heart transcends that of the mind, both in the evolution of the individual soul and of the group soul. From message, from message 30. The time is approaching when the veil between worlds will be rent and much that has been taught about the higher worlds will become visible to etheric physical eyes. The ancient prophecy of the appearance of heaven on earth is coming closer to the edge of reality as evolving humanity draws nearer to the far-off worlds. For evolved human souls entering the world of light, the joys of incarnation will be incalculable. Joy is a synthesis of light and love. It arises from the wisdom of the heart that has known the pain of human living. It is the reward of the soul that has extricated itself from the world of division, separation, and conquest, and by passing through the searing, purifying fires of transformation, has entered into the union that is called the Kingdom of Souls. And now we'd like to open up the webinar for discussion, uh, which will be moderated by Alexander. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Martin. And we now invite anyone in the audience, everyone in the audience, actually, to share your thoughts, comments, and maybe questions. And in order to do that, um, please uh, use the function raise your hand on your control panel. And when you do that, you will be unmuted. And now, for technical reasons, everyone is muted, except of the panelists. And also, you can write your comments or questions in the question section of your control panel. Uh, hello, Sheldon. Well, yes, magnificent. Thank you so much, yeah. Martin and Nancy. Martin, the slides and your way of talking us through Scorpio was not only delightful, but <laughs> <laughs> profound. 
And Nancy, uh, thank you for, thank you, for the reading. Just such light, such love, such joy. Thank you. Oh, dear Sheldon, it's so good to hear your voice. Thank you for being there. I feel such joy to know that you're there. Thank you. All of us, thank you. <clears throat> Me too, Sheldon and Elena. And Elena, are you there, Elena? I am here. And <laughs> I echo everything Sheldon said. There is just such beauty and power oh. and love in both of your presentations. It's, it's absolutely real, and our hearts are just oh, deepened and widened and flowing through with, with what you have presented today. Thank you. What we need today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, there is a comment from Isabel Kong. Uh, yes, indeed. Thank you for this enlightening talks. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you for being here. You're welcome, Isabel. Michael Linfield. Hello. Good morning. Actually, actually, Alexander, actually, and Marina, we are together. We are listening together, and so I speak from his computer. Oh, hello. Are, Hi, Marina. We are at we are Hi, at Marina. <laughs> hello, hello. So, um, uh, many congratulations, Martin and Nancy, because you are able to really um, um, illustrate the the whole process has been a synthesis uh, uh, in consciousness of all the passages and a very synthetic uh, presentation and um, the proposal you do about um, uh, about um, the formation of small groups in connection uh, or trying to create a channel and a connection directly with the ashram is very exciting and I believe that it's really uh, the, a new way, uh, also a new step um, in the group uh, endeavor and group experience because uh, um, we, we do a lot of effort to, we make a lot of effort to form a group and to grow through a group but uh, it arrives a point in which uh, uh, we need to, to find the next step and the next step is uh, from what you said uh, which is very resonant with me is to form uh, um, a group which takes uh, over the responsibility to uh, bring into the world particles of the energy of a master, and um, and I believe that this is the very much part of the hierarchical plan of of exteriorization. Probably is the way, the main way through which exteriorization uh, can uh, unfold. And so thank you that you have uh, explained it so well, and it opens up new possibilities also also for others for other groups. And if I just might add, this is Michael, I think it's time to demystify this whole area of cooperation, closer cooperation with the ashram. There's been so much glamour and distortion around it, as we know, and there's a hesitancy, there's a reticence to even believe that we can be in working cooperation with with uh, these beings who basically have gone through the human experience, have mastered it, that's why they're called masters, and I th think it's it's time to put it in to a sense of right proportion, and uh, we know that, that Scorpio requires humility, as you said, the disciple Martin has to kneel down one knee to grab the hydra, that's humility, and I think DK talked about humility be being about an adjusted sense of right proportion, and so I remember when I was living at Fenholm, we said, what we have to do with the mystical is we have to take out the mist, all that obscures <laughs> it. But what we have to do is to leave the tickle. 
<laughs> fun, the enjoyment in it. So I'm, I'm saying, let's deal with the mystical by removing the mists of glamour, and uh, but leave the tickle, which is the joy mm -hmm. of cooperation with the ashram. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank, you. Thank you, Michael. Yes, the tickle and the joy is there definitely when when these groups are functioning well and. Um, Marina, thank you for, for mentioning the, the particles of the ashram that have to be embodied by, by groups. Um, I think that's so true and one of the messages um, in the K messages that, that we're, we're referring to as call from the mountain is that it's up to discipleship groups to create the environment for the externalization. It can't happen on its own. It can't just, you know, drop into the world, um, that's what we're being told, but there has to be a welcoming environment and so these particles of, of energy from the ashram that we can, we can become, we can bring into life, into manifestation are part of the whole process, the early part of the externalization process. So thank you for mentioning that. There you know. Welcome. I would add that it's obvious that it requires a, a continued purification because we have to continue to adapt our the state of our chakras uh, uh, to in order to to be able to hold uh, those uh, potent particles. But uh, but this is the work, and yes. we do it joyfully, as Michael said. Yes, and and particular it's particularly germane to Scorpio because. <laughs> Scorpio keeps working at us for the, that purification until it finally takes hold. Yes. Thank you, Marina and Michael. Good to hear your voices. Um, there are a few messages. Um, uh, there, um, Michael Arterby says, the message from the call from the mountains are deeply profound and beautiful. Can I have your permission to share these passages with my groups? Your presentation is deeply felt in love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. I missed the last name. Uh, Michael Etterby, and I, I apologize if I pronounce it not correctly. Um, thank you so much for your comment. And yes, you may share the messages with whomever will be resonant with them, yes. Um, and you can find them at the website that I mentioned. I'll, I'll mention it again. Um, www, sorry, um, callfromthemountain.net. And you can see the link uh, in your uh, chat window as, uh, as the message. So you can just directly copy uh, from your control panel. Oh, thank you. That's great. Uh, Jeannie Ross uh, asks, how may I review this webinar? It was so much important in four, and I'd love to review it again. Thank you for this beautiful presentation, which highlights love and brotherhood. Uh, this uh, webinar is being recorded, re is recorded in the process of recording, and it will be posted uh, to our website, uh, 2025initiative.org. Okay, so mm, there are more comments, and uh, it's always good to hear live voices. So, if anyone would like to share um, your impressions or questions live, please raise your hand. And but I meanwhile I continue reading the comments. Uh, Isabel Kunk says, Martin, uh, thank you for relating the case work to that of Nassim uh, Haramein. Most interesting. Uh, yes, I would like to say just a little bit about that because um, I'm working with a couple of triangles co-workers who are very much are learning a great deal from scientists such as Nazim Haraman, and there's some wonderful videos on uh, YouTube, and he has a wonderful website, and there's a lot of breakthroughs in science that uh, are going to lead us closer to what Tesla discovered in the early part of the last century and which has been repressed by corporate interests 
but is now emerging and becoming a reality as part of the preparation for the new era. It's a wonderful area of exploration, and I'm, I'm with you on how important it is. Thank you. Um, Joe Gillen says, so beautiful, so new, very touching in the heart. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you very much. Christine Moore, when did you receive this compilation of messages? Is this any way similar to or different from other guidance at this time? Um, these messages were received uh, during the course of 2014, last year, starting about a year and a half ago. Um, and are they different? Well, what one of the things that makes them different is that they were really uh, evoked by a group, invoked and evoked by a group. Uh, there was a group of people seeking answers to the the um, the question that I mentioned earlier. What were the obstacles to communication between humanity and hierarchy? That was our impulse. That's what. Um, gave us impetus to go forward as a group and in response to that quest, that inquiry, these messages were given. So I think in, in that way alone they are different and I'm not sure, I, probably in other ways as well they're, they're different, their content, but I don't know everything that's out there so it's hard to answer that question. Well I, I would like to simply say that um, they're different in one sense in that one of the efforts that we've made at our website and in other ways is to promote what DK calls the three recognitions. The recognition of the soul by humanity, the recognition of the hierarchy or, or guiding presence on the inner realms, the kingdom of souls, and the recognition of the planet itself. And one of the ways in which these K messages, these messages, from Kanchenjunga differ from a lot of quote channeling out there is that we're not talking to space aliens <laughs> we're not at least not I I'm not talking to space aliens. Um, that we're not uh, we're, we're dealing with those two realities which have gotten so little press in even in the esoteric community as and the vit vital importance of humanity coming to recognize. Now there's been an awful lot done in recent decades promoting the reality of the soul. Oprah Winfrey has just re recently uh, presented this belief series which is very very moving and it makes one aware of how many different disciplines there are, how many different beliefs there are and how many different ways there are of connecting with the soul. But there are very few to our knowledge uh, connections with transmissions in telepathic streams of energy into a group which promote the reality of the spiritual hierarchy, their, the reality of their approach, the nature of their quality, which is love, and the transformative power that's at the center of each and every ashram. They're diff this is, these are different, and I could go on, but I will be silent for now. <laughs> Um, I'd like just to share um, my th thought about this and um, thank you for bringing this um, to our group focus and it's in a way it's a continuation of the conversation that we had during the uh, Gemini webinar and I really appreciate what Michael said about uh, demystifying this connection with the inner realms and I think if we take two advices or well, not advices but mostly like uh, uh, requirements that DK uh, gave to us as our guidance principles uh, in terms of relations how we relate to this kind of communications and one is that we that we read at the beginning of every blue book that we have to always use our consciousness and our experience uh, uh, to 
either accept or deny any truth written in the blue books. So we always have to use inner voice to agree or disagree. That's one and another in some some way he when he talks about the next dispensation of the teaching and it's actually we have been having this conversation with uh, my friends pretty often how will we recognize actually with will the next dispensation come or not and decay pretty clear says that the main factor for us should be the inner resonance so again back to the same so just if we something resonates in us with certain messages and they can be taken as a practical in the if they can be practically applied for service for humanity then here you go what else do you need and so right. yes thank you yes thank you sasha mm. and it's already um time for the meditation i think but there were few questions we people asked about the right spelling of the uh scientists you mentioned and nasim and don't remember his last name and his website so if you could Aaron. maybe type in the chat uh uh to I, window i will type in the chat when we're when we're done with the meditation yes at the end of meditation yes, I remember. <laughs> yes, and the website, his website, if you know. Okay, all right. I will send it. Thank you. We're going to do a brief meditation to close out, and uh, it should help humanity. Just think that what we're doing now is getting together and creating an invocative field <clears throat> through which the higher forces can work. So let us begin. Focus your energies in the third eye between the eyebrows. Here you are the personality, the quintessential energy of matter the forces of the lower nature carried up into heaven. Open gently to the presence of the soul. Focus in a single point of vision. Hold the mind steady in the light. Affirm silently <clears throat> in quietness and confidence shall be my strength. Quiet the astral body Strengthening your confidence in the plan. See yourself as the focused persona, the consecrated instrument of the true self. Recognize those who stand with you, bound together in love and light, one unified group of light workers offered in service to the great ones.
Together we stand in silence, harmonically resonant with all who serve the greater good. Together we form a point of focused spiritual energy, open to inner realms, registering the downpouring spiritual energies of the brotherhood of light and love. See this group of meditators as an instrument for the inner ashram. Envision us as a channel of light and love to the world, a living link between humanity and the kingdom of souls. See the energies pouring through us, transforming human experience. See these energies blessing humanity as a whole, the world disciple mounting the fixed cross of discipleship, the pilgrim on the way, awakening to the realm of the soul. See the living energies invoked by our group bathing the human family in light. Visualize this golden healing presence streaming forth, blessing our fellow travelers, opening the eyes of those who are ready to see. Envision a triple stream of energy opening the way for humanity. Light supernal, love eternal, and peaceful silent will. We stand, we stand together, together with Christ. With Christ and the approaching higher directing, directing these the healing, healing forces to the awakening, awakening world. world. Oh. Thank you, Sasha. That's that's our part. We are finished. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you very much, Nancy. Thank you, Martin. And I suggest uh, that we, using this opportunity of being together under the energy of the Scorpio, we sound the great invocation in the original wording. From the point of light, point of light. within the mind of within God, within the mind of God, let light, let stream, light stream forth into the minds, into of, the men. minds of men. Let light descend on earth. Light descend on earth. From the point of love, the point of love within the heart of God, the heart of God let love stream let forth, love stream forth into, the hearts, into of the hearts of men. May Christ, May return, Christ return to earth. From the center, From the center where the will of the God, will of God now, is known, let purpose guide let the little guide wills of men. The purpose which the, purpose the masters, which the masters know, serve. know and serve. From the center, From the center which we call the race of men, the race of men let the plan of love plan and light love work out. Work. And may it seal, may the, it door seal the door where evil dwells. Where evil dwells. Let light, let light and love, and love power. And Oh. Restore, the, Restore plan the plan on earth. Thank you. And uh, I want to invite you to join our uh, coming webinars. Um, our next uh, webinar is going to be New Moon uh, on November 13th. It's two days after the actual New Moon, and it's going to the next webinar in the cycle of cyclic meditation uh, project preparing us to the cycle of Sagittarius. And the next full moon webinar is going to be on November 24th. It's Sagittarius Solar Festival webinar. And we together will focus on the theme of the future of international cooperation and the role of the United Nations. Uh, with Marco Toscana Rivalta from Italy sharing his thoughts on this and leading us in meditation. And the recording of this webinar, today's webinar and all other webinars of the 2025 initiative uh, are available at our website www.2025initiative.org. And Martin, I hope you had a chance to share the name of the scientists and uh, website on the chat window. I unfortunately can't reach the chat window. I'll send it to you, uh, and you can post it on your web page because uh, I'll find it. Yes, yes. So there, the that name and the uh, link to the website will be available on the archived page of this webinar, together with the recording of today's webinar. Thank you.
have a wonderful day and night and let's stay connected thank you everyone god bless thank you thank you everyone bye bye